My father and my husband's father both went to Massey School. I was at Massey from September of 1950 through June of 1955. Massey School's got a very special place in my heart. It's, I went through six years of grammar school here, first through sixth. I was six when I first came and I finished in January, it would have been 1940. Massey Common School holds a spot that is near and dear to the hearts of many Savannians. The building itself also has a remarkable history, beginning with its design by architect John Norris, who gave the city such landmarks as the Andrew Lowe House and the U.S. Customs Building. Massey's history continues today as a heritage center operated by the Savannah Chatham County Public School System. Massey provides quality, curriculum-based history lessons for school students and also offers a unique perspective of Savannah's history for thousands of tourists every year. This is the story of Massey Common School. Today, we're going to be talking about the history of our wonderful school. Massey Heritage Center started in the year 1856 when a man named Peter Massey comes to America. He would come to Savannah regularly and ride on the steamships up to his home in New Jersey. So when Peter Massey would come back to Savannah, the first thing he'd see was many, many children climbing on the docks and playing in the squares, young boys forming small gangs and pickpocketing people as they walked by. <laughs> Peter Massey, uh, growing up poor, wanted to help those children, and so he left in his will $5,000 to the city of Savannah to educate the city's poor children. Peter Massey died in 1841, and the city of Savannah chose to invest his $5,000 gift. The fund grew from $5,000 to $15,000 in 15 years, and in 1856, the city decided to build Massey Common School. John Norris, a well-known architect from New York, designed the central building. He used the Greek Revival style, which gave Massey a very symmetrical, temple-like look. Massey's West Wing was added in 1872 and the East Wing in 1886. 150 students attended Massey in the first year with two teachers and three assistants. Principal Bernard Mallon ran the school and he was a true believer that all children should receive a public education. Mallon moved on to become the Chatham County School Superintendent after the Civil War. And the Civil War in 1864 finally came to Savannah. The United States Army began to arrive with a uh, general named William Tecumseh Sherman. He arrived in Savannah with an army of 62,000 troops. Now, the city was only 22,000 people, so that meant he had an army three times the size of the city arriving. When General William T. Sherman's Union Army arrived in late December 1864, it was bitterly cold in Savannah. With soldiers in need of medical attention, Sherman seized Massey and used it as a hospital primarily because of one unique feature. He picked Massey because of something special. In our basement, there's a furnace, a coal-powered furnace. So the very floorboards that you're standing on right here once held cots that held sick, injured Union soldiers. Uh, and it operated as a hospital uh, for several weeks. A Union naval blockade had made coal scarce in Savannah, so Sherman's troops broke the school desks apart and used the wood to fire the furnace. Wood burns much hotter than coal, so the fire cracked the furnace and rendered it useless to this day. In 1974, Massey closed its doors and ended more than a century of service as a public school. A few years later, a group called the Friends of Massey was formed, spearheaded by local preservationist Emma Adler. Under the Friends' guidance and following their vision, Massey reopened as a heritage education center in 1978. It was very exciting working on it. We set up what came to be called a heritage classroom in the central building on the second room on the second floor. And then we thought we should have an active program with a teacher. And we really practically coined the phrase heritage education. The late Sarah Parsons was hired as Massey's first heritage educator. Ms. Parsons grew famous over the years as she exposed countless students to Savannah's history as never before. Sarah Parsons was the first teacher here. 
and uh, we, still ha we still have people that come back to Massey that talk about how they remember uh, walking around Savannah with her on tour, on one of those uh, Massey tours. Now, a new generation of heritage educators has picked up the baton, and you'll see them leading groups of young people on various educational tours throughout downtown Savannah. As part of our mission to teach students uh, the, the social studies curriculum, uh, or the school curriculum, we use the center's resources, but we also take the students out on the street. We practice what we call a community as a classroom model, where we use the community to teach students their history. Uh, not just local history, but our state's history, international history. So we'll take students out, we'll use the monuments, we'll use the squares, we'll use historical buildings, historical places, all those resources uh, to give students a better understanding of their history. So we actually immerse the students in the content that they're learning, so to speak. One of Massey's most intriguing and relevant exhibits is the Heritage Classroom. Here, students and visitors are taken back in time to see how a real 19th century classroom appeared and how teachers gave instruction. Students can even dress the part. Today we took the students through uh, our workbook which went over the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. We also did a little bit of geography and penmanship exercises, writing with quill and ink. The first thing that we went over was posture, and posture was very important in the 19th century, uh, as well as deportment, the conduct and behavior of students uh, in school, and they would actually get a grade on that. So we had them learn their manners, uh, they had to learn proper posture uh, and proper classroom etiquette. The ones that acted up a little bit, they were required to wear the dunce cap, uh, which was a punishment uh, especially used in the 19th century. That was called moral suasion. Uh, in the center of each of our desks, we have a, a small inkwell, and uh, back in the 19th century, they'd have small glass inkwells that would fit in there. Well, we put a little ink into a jar, and we give each of the students a bird feather that's been whittled down to create a quill, and they dip the quill into the ink uh, and practice their penmanship exercises. So it's fun to kind of get to see uh, what life was like uh, when penmanship was a lot more important. Massey was, of course, originally a school built in the 1850s and operated until 1974, but our classroom is a reproduction 19th century classroom with the desks of that time period and the accessories and resources as well. And it's also got the principal's office and visitors are able to ring the bell, the original 1856 bell that was hung in the belfry when the school was built. One of the traditions that continues to this day is the annual May Day celebration at Massey. Philippa Pattison remembers the event very well from her days as a student in the 1940s. Well, a maypole dance was a, a round dance where boys and girls participated and in, in our case, we had pink and white ribbons. And I don't remember who, which group had the pink and which group white, but alternating around the pole. And at one point in the music, you would, lots of the dance would go up to the pole and back to the pole and around. But then at one point, you start plaiting over and under, over and under, and you see the plait up on the pole, if it's done right. And you had to learn. You know, practice. But Massey's not just for school children. The center is also open seven days a week to the general public. It's where everybody should go to Massey for an orientation to Savannah's history and architecture. And you absolutely can't help but be terribly impressed because there's so much history and and to be learned there. I mean, if you went there as a visitor, you'd understand so much about this beautiful city that otherwise you don't. Of course, it's always a special day when alumni stop by for a visit, as Howard Morrison and Stratton Leopold did. Well, should we, should we go in? Sure. How many times did we walk in a store? A lot. A lot. Lots. You, you <laughs> one more year than I. But we were this tall. It was the only difference. <laughs> exactly. I sort of remember going up these Maybe. stairs and down the stairs over there. And what do we have here? The history of architecture. I right. think this is fascinating. Yeah. 
And, and so much of this architecture throughout is in Savannah. Remember we used to do pageants, Thanksgiving, Christmas, just things to celebrate the season. And always we're up here. Yep. And the school would be down there. And seasonal. Seasonal things like Thanksgiving, we would have the pilgrims yep. with, our, with our paper hats that we made. And Native American Indians. Native American Indians. And the floor is the same. Oh yeah. Lots of little boys and girls have walked on that floor. Yep. I could never ring. Did you ever ring the bell? Only in recent history. Okay, well, we need to go today. We need to go ring the bell. I think we should. And wake up the neighborhood. Okay, Is that a deal? let's do it. Let's go. So this is a principal's office. Remember Ms. Flanders and Ms. Bargerin. And Ms. Dunn. Ms. Dunn. Now, do you think we'll get kicked out of school or put on uh, probation if we ring the bell? Let's try it. We'll do it together. I'll blame it on you. You blame it okay, on me. Okay, ready? Massey Common School, an architectural landmark, a school for Savannah's poor, a reluctant hospital, a public school, and now a monument to the past and a bellwether of the future, a place where history lives and gets rediscovered every day. Here, history and exhibits are not hidden behind glass, they're in the open, available for you to experience firsthand. We hope you have enjoyed this short video and that you're walking away with a feeling of amazement that one place in one very special city could hold so many treasures from the past and so much promise for the future. <laughs>